Okay, so we have the difference of squares, target seven, homework. So I just want to remind you one more time that if you get super stuck, you can always use your method um, of factoring that we learned on target six. That still applies here. So first step in the difference of squares is to look for a common factor. We don't have it on number one. And so then we uh, check if it actually is the difference of squares. So our three pieces of criteria, B has to be zero, which it is. Um, you have to have two perfect squares, x squared and four are both perfect squares, and you have to be subtracting, which we are. So in that case, we take the square root of each of your numbers, so the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of four is two, and then for your factored form, you add those, so x plus two, and then subtract them, and that is the factored form. We have to go ahead and find the zeros, so set those each equal to zero and solve, so we get x equals negative two or x equals positive two. And you can check your work by plugging in your answer if you'd like. So same thing over here, look for a greatest common factor. We don't have one, so go into factoring uh, because this is the difference of squares. It meets your three pieces of criteria. So I'm taking the square root of each of the terms to write the factored form. I add the numbers and then I subtract them. And you can subtract before you add, that's fine as well. And then we're gonna set each of these equal to zero and solve. And you always get that positive and negative of your answer. So taking a look at number three, what I'm noticing on number three is that both of those numbers are divisible by two. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out that common factor. And then I'm gonna pause and check my three pieces of criteria. Yes, yes, and yes. B is zero, perfect squares, and subtraction. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the square root of my two numbers and then I can go into factored form, but don't lose your common factor of two. That's important. So add your two values, subtract them, and then we're gonna find the zeros, find the solutions. All right, on number four, I'm gonna look for a common factor, but I don't see one. So I'm gonna go into the factoring process because every time I look at these, I always like go through those three things. Is this the difference of squares? It is. So that square root would be eight B. Square root of one is just one. So we're gonna add them and subtract them. So that's the factored form, set each of those equal to zero, and we're gonna solve. So this would be B equals negative one over eight, and this is B equals one over eight. On to the back. So first thing we're gonna look for is a common factor, which we do have of 25. Check for the difference of squares. We've got it. So square root of x squared is x. The square root of four is two. So common factor out in front. Add your two square roots and then subtract them. And then we're gonna set each of our factors equal to zero. So x plus two equals zero and x minus two equals zero. Number six, I can't think of a common factor that we have here. 
So I'm going to go straight into the process. So 121, the square root of that would be 11. The square root of 25 is 5. So my two factors would be 11n plus 5 and 11n minus 5. And so if I set each of those equal to 0, and solve, so I would subtract 5 and then divide by 11. Or in here I would add 5 and then divide by 11. All right, last two. Oh, just kidding. Last four. So taking a look, find your common factor. 8. So then check for the difference of squares. We've got it. So I'm taking the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, writing the um, factored form. Make sure you include that 8 out in front. And then you might be at a place where you can just write the zeros, like you can kind of solve that in your head, and that's totally fine. Just don't make a silly mistake. All right, looking for a common factor. Those are both divisible by 3. Then we do have the difference of squares. These are both perfect squares. There's no b value. We're subtracting. So the 3 out in front, 3x plus 5, 3x minus 5. That's your factored form. And then we have our zeros. So that would be x equals negative 5 thirds. If I subtract 5 and then divide by 3, and this would be positive 5 thirds if I add 5 and divide by 3. Now we're at the last two. So if I divide both of these by 10, which would be our common factor, that would be b squared minus 100, which is the difference of squares. b value is 0. Subtracting, perfect squares. So the square root of b squared is b. The square root of 100 is 10. So for the factored form, put your 10 out in front. Then add your two terms and subtract them. and then set each equal to zero and solve. And again, this might be a process that you've kind of gotten used to. You can do in your head and that's great. Taking a look at uh, number 10, there's a common factor of two. But that leaves us with the difference of squares because v squared is a perfect square, as is 36. So our factored form would have a 2 out in front, and then we're going to do v plus 6 and v minus 6. And then solve. So we would subtract 6 to get v equals negative 6, and add 6 to get v equals positive 6. And that was your homework for target 7. Seven.